Hey everyone, Lopkex here. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you my top five tips for drafting in Heroes of the Storm, with particular focus, of course, on Hero League. These top five tip videos are a new series I am working on on the channel, so if you like them, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Give me any feedback as well. This is the first one, so give me feedback down below. Uh, I've got three of these kind of scripted out and written and prepared so far, so they'll be coming out uh, over the next couple of weeks. Um, but if you have any ideas for uh, topics, let let me know and uh, yeah, the future of the show is in your hands. Okay, so tip number one, know the standard team composition. This isn't the only team composition, of course, but this is the basic one, the standard one, the default one that you're gonna be looking to build in, in most of your games. Um, so uh, the five heroes that we have to pick, these are the five roles in order of importance. Uh, number one, a healer, something like a Rhaegar. Uh, this is the most important thing you can do for your team if your team has four assassins what is the best thing you could add on to save it from itself the best thing you can do is add on a healer uh in quick match they had to change the rules so that teams with healers were only matched against teams with healers because it was just unfair otherwise you always want a healer number two you want a warrior um not quite as important as a healer but still very very good something big and tanky that brings a lot of control to the fight and keeps your squishier damage dealers safe uh, and lets them do their job more effectively. Uh, a good example of a warrior would, of course, be ETC. Next up, we want a ranged damage dealer. Uh, the advantage of being ranged is that, well, it's just easier, safer, and more consistent uh, to do the damage you need to do. Uh, a good example of a ranged damage dealer would be Vala. Um, whereas poor old melee damage dealers, they're not always able to go in safely and do their damage. Ranged can do it much more often and that really helps you out taking objectives, sieging up, or even fighting during team fights. It's just something consistent you can rely on. So you, you do nearly always want a ranged damage dealer as well. Uh, numbers four and five, bit more flexible here. And this is also very important. You On most maps, want at least one good solo laning hero. A hero that you can leave on their own in a lane and know that they will be safe and get you all of the XP soak from that particular lane. Uh, you'll very often, at the moment at least, be looking to find that hero in these final two more flexible picks. Uh, pick number four is a, a frontline flex. That's what I like to call it. This is a second warrior. Um, potentially a melee assassin, maybe even a melee specialist. Uh, something that is a bit tankier, that helps bulk up that front line to protect, like I said, those squishy range damage healers or squishy healers that you're gonna have at the back. Um, so something like Thrall or Dehaka would be an obvious uh, example here. And then number five, we have a general flex hero. Uh, you've got a, this is where you kind of get a bit more wacky or you can kind of uh, tweak your team comp quite a bit while still keeping it within the sort of standard structure. So here, for example, you could grab one of those more unusual heroes uh, that people do find difficult to draft into team comps. This is the spot for them. So something like the Lost Vikings or Nova. Um, you could also go for a second support here, something like Tassadar, maybe even even a Zarya, um, you could, uh, well, let's say with a particular composition we've already set up, we could grab something that kind of synergizes with that well and add something extra. So we could grab, let's say, a Samoro, who's going to work well with you know, Bloodlust from Rhaegar, Earthquake from Thrall, and kind of distract from the Thrall and the Vala with his illusions. And then he also brings the strength of being really good at taking out objectives and Merc Camps quickly, which the rest of the team mm -mm, just frees them up to do other things. Uh, or potentially could go kind of a different direction, get uh, another range damage dealer like Falstad who can solo lane as well and bring some burst damage and control or you know what just counter pick whatever the enemy team has you know it's a it's a general flex it's quite open really um so it's typically people will pick up a range damage dealer here but do be aware that this is where you can really open it up if you want to and do something a bit different now like i said at the start this is the, the standard comp the basic comp it's not the only comp and you can change it up, uh, especially I would say to counter what the enemy team is doing. Um, and I highly recommend as well, the Heroes Global Championship is starting later this month, January 2017. Uh, and the goal for this year is to have a regular broadcast that you can tune into consistently every week. That can be a great way to find out what the sort of standard compositions are at the moment from the best players in the game and that can give you a good insight into the types of team that you want to be looking at building in your hero league games as well all right tip number two this is a smaller more practical tip which is to pick your healer or your warrior early on in the draft. Now this is particularly important if you are what I'll call blue team here for the sake of clarity, which is the team that gets three picks before the second ban phase. One team gets first pick, 
and then two additional picks before the second ban phase while the other team gets only two. This is particularly important if you're that first team. One of the worst things you can do for your draft is to pick your three damage dealing heroes, um, your ranged damage, your melee flex, and then your general flex, usually the damage dealing ones, to pick those three before that second ban phase. It's a disaster. Why is that the case? Well, the reality of it is that there are much smaller hero pools for healers and for warriors. So often these are very good to target uh, in that second ban phase. You also give away pretty much everything you're trying to build with your draft if you do pick those three damage dealers early on, which makes it really easy for the enemy team to ban away the warriors or supports that would fit really well with what you've already got. And then finally, it makes it really, really easy for the enemy team to pick whatever they want and you have got no option to counter them. There's a lot of damage dealers in the game and they all have particular niches. They all have particular styles of hero that they're good at countering. Um, if you've picked all your damage dealers early on, then you've got pretty much no flexibility left to counter. So for example, let's imagine a total disaster where you've picked three mages. You've got Kael'thas, Jaina and, and uh, Li Ming, okay, really bad composition. Well, if you've done that before the draft, the enemy team can simply turn around and you know pick a Nubarak or pick Stitches, you know, pick a whole bunch of heroes that have uh, ability damage and spell damage resistance and spell armor. It'll be horrible for you, so just don't ever do it. That's one of the, the main tips I can give, is try to pick at least your warrior or your healer, just one of them. Pick them early before the second draft. It leaves you much more open to counter pick with your damage picks, what the enemy team is trying to do, and it also protects you from being banned out of some really good heroes uh, for the roles that have smaller hero pools. Okay, tip number three. What sort of hero should I play or how many heroes do I need to know how to play? Well, what I'm going to tell you might be uh, a little bit unpopular, but it is true. And this is that for the most part in Hero League, you will be able to get away with and you will do best with having two to three comfort pick heroes. What I mean by this is these are two or three heroes that you play nearly all the time. You know all the ins and outs of them. You can play multiple talent builds. You're really comfortable so that when all the stressful situations and high pressure situations come up in a hero league game, you are able to deal with them fully because you are so comfortable on this hero and you can adapt to everything that's going on. This means going into a draft and saying at the start of the draft, this is a very easy way to do it. Say, hey team, uh, letting you know I'm a main Ragnaros and Tychus player, for example, and then your team can can try to work around it. I would say, you know, obviously for the most part, um, pay attention to the bans. If one of your heroes is banned away all the time or first picked all the time, you're not going to get them. So you're going to have to expand your roster a bit then, but try to focus in on just having those two or three heroes. Now, on top of this, it is very important as well that you have a few more heroes that you can at least play. I think there are kind of three um, factors, sort of a Venn diagram, if you will, of things that you're looking for when you're, you're looking for heroes in Hero League. Uh, the, the most simplest and straightforward and personal one is a hero that you enjoy, um, and it's up to you to decide how important your enjoyment of playing a particular hero is to choosing them in Hero League, but it's there. Uh, then number two is heroes that you're good with, personally, that you are good with. Um, some heroes you're just never going to be good with, uh, and then other heroes you can get good with with practice. Uh, where are you going to direct that practice? Well, number three, you want to know heroes that are good in the meta. And we're going to come to that later on uh, in this tip video. So you want to kind of overlap. I'd say with your comfort picks, you obviously want to have all three. You want a hero that's really good in general right now that you are personally very good on and that you love playing. They're your comfort pick heroes. Um, then you can work out, you know, a few other heroes. It'd be a few for each role that I'd say that you are at least personally good on. Uh, and then preferably that are good in the meta right now. And then <laughs> try to learn to enjoy them if you can, because you're not going to always be able to play your favorite assassin. Sometimes you need to play warrior. Sometimes you need to play healer. That's just the way of the game. So have a few others that you can play, but really dictate and direct your focus onto uh, a small handful that you are really, really good at. <laughs> of course, this isn't, if you're watching my videos, this isn't a tip that I follow myself because I just, it doesn't suit my personality. I get really bored playing the same hero. Makes for good videos because it means that I typically have lots of different vid uh, heroes coming out all the time, which is great for what I do, um, but it's it's not the most effective way to climb. So there you go. All right, tip number four, um, following on a little bit from tip number three is <laughs> by talking to your teammates and it's to suggest two or three good options for heroes, not just one. This is a huge mistake I see people make in the draft 
all the time and it's awful and this literally loses games from the best of intentions this is where you turn around your teammate is the final pick and you go oh well hang on a second actually tychus let's say for example is the best pick for here right now he he counters what the enemy team has really well he's strong in the meta right now Tyka, he fits with the heroes that we already have. Tychus is perfect. He's good on this map, everything. Yeah, and then you go into the chat and you tell your teammate, hey, pick Tychus. Tychus is the best. No, don't pick that one. No, don't pick that one. Pick Tychus. Tychus, Tychus, Tychus. Problem is, what happens if your teammate, he turns around and goes, oh yeah, I see all these points. I see how Tychus looks so good. I'm going to pick Tychus. He picks Tychus. You go into the game. Turns out this guy is the worst Tychus player you have ever seen in your life. He does. He has no idea how to play the hero. He picks all the wrong talents. He just gets himself killed constantly. He's in the wrong place all the time and he loses the game. I have seen this happen so many times. How do you avoid this? Because you really, really want to avoid this. What I suggest doing is to, when you are giving your teammate a suggestion for a type of hero to pick or if they ask for uh, advice or they ask for input on what sort of hero to pick i highly recommend giving at least two probably preferably three maybe even four uh, good suggestions to them so for example let's say you're looking for that sort of ranged damage dealer who's kind of good against max health stuff you might say oh well tychus would be perfect but um let's say rainer would be quite good or maybe even vala or heck we could do something kind of crazy and pick up i don't know let's pick up a zera tool i don't know um just give them a bunch of suggestions because that what it lets them do is go oh yeah well tychus would be perfect here but man i really suck at tychus hmm but rainer's kind of second best well i'm actually really good at rainer so i'll pick rainer and then we'll go with that and then you're gonna have much much better games all right guys and here we are on my desktop for tip number five which was how do i know the meta how do i learn about what heroes are good what heroes should i be focusing my attention on and expecting people to be playing and everything like that. Well, I've got three different ways that you can do this, and I think you're actually gonna find that it's very, very helpful and detailed. First of all, though, we're gonna start off with a bit of shameless self-promotion. Um, so we do have, I produce a tier list about every month or so. What I've done for convenience sake is stick them at the bottom of the channel so you can find them really easily uh, and admire the ever-evolving artwork that I do. Um, but uh, yeah, I produce one every major patch, which is every three or four weeks or so, typically speaking. Um, and in this tier list, I will, in fact, if you open it up and mute it, because it'd be strange listening to myself. Here we go. Okay, hang on. Let's, uh, let's fast forward to, I don't know. Ah, for goodness sake. Somewhere. There we go. Here we go. This is per perfect. There we go. There's the Warriors, for example. So what I'll do is I'll go through every single role in the game, every hero in the game, and I'll, I'll put them into uh, a tier, which is kind of like, um, it should signify their rough overall strength. Uh, and what I'll also do very importantly is I'll talk about the meta at the moment, what what sort of styles of hero are good, why particular heroes are good, or why particular types of heroes are good, um, so that you can kind of get a, a broader understanding of it and apply it a bit more. Uh, so this is a good place to kind of start off, um, or then alternatively, just like the, the regular videos that I produce on the channel. Um, Especially, for example, the Road to Rank, uh, Road to Grand Master videos I produce in this in this particular playlist, um, you can see most of my rank games uh, with a whole variety of different heroes. I talk you through the draft and everything, um, and uh, yeah, that can be a good place to look as well to learn a bit more about drafting and about ranked. Uh, now over here, we've got something which is updated a bit more regularly. We're going to hop over to Hotslogs.com. Um, and you're gonna click this button, additional filters here. Now let's say, hypothetically, you are in gold and you've just popped your queue for Hero League and you're in the draft right now for, let's say, Battlefield of Eternity. Here's what we're gonna do. We go over here, we've got this All Leagues button. We click over this, we're gonna uh, search for just Gold League. All right, now we're searching for all heroes just for Gold League. Then we're gonna hop over here, Battlefield of Eternity. Let's go. And here we go, now what we have, for the last seven days, what you can do is you can also search for more days. So for example, if there hasn't been a large patch in a while, you can search back. You kinda need to know when the patches are in case you know you search too far back and then you start getting info on a hero who has been radically changed. If you wanna be super safe, you can do only the current build. I mean, let's, we could do that, but as you can see, there's been very few games because there's just been a patch that uh, oh, was a hot fix though, so it's not important. So we'll just go for the last seven days instead. Um, but yeah, here we can see, all right, these are the heroes with the highest win rates for gold uh, or ranked by win rate on Battlefield of Eternity. So this is a really, really good way 
to just give yourself a very quick crash course in your particular map. You hop in, even just take a glance at the top 10 heroes and go, all right, cool. Sergeant Hammer, Samuro, these dudes are doing really well. Lieutenant Morales, Brightwing supports are doing really well. Leoric, now here's something you have to watch out for, right? If we take a look at Leoric, this can often be a good indicator. This is the amount of percentage they've gone up in this uh, time period as opposed to the previous time period. Uh, you can see this updated six minutes ago. It's updated pretty regularly. Uh, but Leoric, he's only got 70 games, not a lot of games. Um, and he's gone up 13%, which means that the previous week he was at 42%, which is awful. Um, so definitely be maybe a little bit skeptical about this one, right? So small sample size, um, gone up a lot. So we'd be a bit skeptical about that. Gaslo though, well, he hasn't changed much at all. So he just seems to be solidly good on this map at uh, what level are we at? Goal level uh, and so on and so forth. Ragnaros has gone up a lot. So we might be a bit cautious about him. Fala, Kairosim, so on and so forth. Should give you a bit of an insight. Um, again, Rex are only 13 games, which is why that win rate is so uh, varied. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, this can give you a, a, a good crash course. It's not always perfect, not always perfect, but the advantage of this is that it is completely tailored to your particular skill level and um, your particular rank. For example, let's take a look at, let's take a look at Silver for Tomb of the Spider Queen. Okay, so you have the Butcher, Karazim. Again, these heroes have gone up quite a bit. I mean, we could even search back. Let's search back a couple of weeks. And here we go, so Rex are, uh, Karazim the Butcher, Kelthus, a lot of games on Kelthus, hasn't changed much, he is a solid league performing hero here. Ragnaros, same thing, hasn't changed much, a lot of games, in fact, banned most of the time, and uh, a lot of stuff right there. Um, so you see, you kind of a, a pretty good insight into each particular map and the heroes are going to be strong. Good for a crash course, also you can like zip down and then see which heroes are going to be really, really bad on a given map, so that can be helpful as well. Um, then the final thing, we're also, I'll also show you how to use this, do this one on hot slugs as well, but what this is, this is a pretty useful tool. This kind of links into what I was saying before about picking a, a few heroes and maining those heroes. Let's take a look at this. So what this does is it ranks the maps in terms from the hero's perspective. So let's take Greymane, for example. He's going to be a good example here. Greymane loves Battlefield of Eternity. Now, his win rate, 47%. That's pretty bad. Uh, what this uh, tool is doing, I'll put the link in the description, is it's showing how much the hero likes the particular map. So this is one of Greymane's better maps. In fact, it's probably Greymane's best map. So if you are a Greymane main... <laughs> I chose a really bad example for this. God damn it. All right, well, we're rolling with it though. So gray main main, <laughs> gray main main, if you're gray main 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 main. Um, all right, gray main's pretty weak. He's gonna have a bad win rate on every map at the moment because at the moment, at the time of recording this, the hero kind of sucks. Just straight up, he kind of sucks, unfortunately. But let's say he is your main hero. He is the hero you play nearly every game. What maps do I play him on? Um, what this this tool makes it really easy for you to find. So we can see Battlefield of Eternity. Okay, this is one of Greymane's better maps. Let's compare him to another rare hero. Let's say Asmodan. All right, so Asmodan hates this map. Let's say your two heroes are Greymane, Asmodan. All right, we go to Battlefield of Eternity. Um, we got two unusual heroes, which are typically going to be fairly low on the win percentages. So it can be difficult to know where you want to play them. Well, we can use this tool. We say Battlefield of Eternity. All right, I play Greymane and Asmodan. Asmodan hates this map. Greymane loves this map. I'll try play Greymane on Battlefield of Eternity. If we switch over to Blackheart's Bay, this should be the other way around. Um, there's Asmodan. Where's Greymane? Greymane is here. Okay, so on Battle, uh, Blackheart's Bay, now we say, all right, I main Greymane and Asmodan. Well, Greymane hates this map. Asmodan loves this map. I'll play Asmodan. Um, and that can be, um, this can be a nice tool. And there's one for every single map. I only found this the other day. I think it was put up two days ago. And it was um, shared on the subreddit, which is really, really useful. Uh, here's how you do it in um, game. Let's find uh, Greymane. He should be down at the bottom, right? Yeah, there he is. Hey, friend. 39.5% winner. That's wonderful. All right, let's say we are a diamond player. Cool. Right, we'll search for diamond. Not only did you get info on the talents, but we want to use these little tabs over here. We can go wins by map. All right, at diamond level play, uh, Greymane, he is doing really well on Warhead Junction at the moment. Uh, oh, that's very well on Warhead Junction, in fact. He's doing good on Garden of Terror. 
uh, good on Haunted Mines, Battlefield of Eternity is there as well, he likes that map, Sky Temple, and so on. So we can search for the different levels of play. Let's say I'm a Bronze Grey Main. What does Bronze Grey Main look like? All right, so sort of similar things. He's not doing too good on BOE here. So this is, you know, this might go out of date a little bit. It's hard to say. Um, but yeah, it should give you kind of a rough overview. I mean, overall, at the moment, in the last week, he's still doing, you know, you can see, he's doing pretty good on BOE overall. A little bit better. Warhead Junction also seems to be a pretty good map for him, and we could go check that here. Let's test this out. I should have tested this stuff before. So, Greyman, yeah, there we go. Greyman likes this map. Greyman's pretty good over here. Cool. All right. And this will be, I don't know exactly how they fulfill the statistics. It can be a good way. But this will also give you information too. What you can also do is, let's say, again, go back to our Diamond Greyman. We can say, all right, I want to play Greyman at Diamond. Uh, I'm going to be good against, you know, should be good against Medivh and Uther, Gazlo, Stitches the Butcher, Rainer. That's pretty important because he's played quite a lot. Johanna, that's pretty important because she's played quite a lot. Uh, Vala, and she's played quite a lot, so he's doing well there. Uh, we need to watch out for heroes like Zul, Rex, Archens, uh, Gul'dan, Samoro, Kerrigan, Malfurion, uh, Artanis. They're played a lot as well, so we need to watch out for that. Gul'dan played a lot too. Um, so we need to be careful of those, because he's got a bad matchup into them. So this is... Yeah, you can also see heroes that you combo well with. So really, hop on to Hot Slugs, guys. And this can be a way to research your heroes. Um... And especially then at the start of every map as well, like I said, hop on. I highly recommend you have this on a second monitor or simply have it open and then alt tab out to it. Have it set to your thing. So for example, I'd have it set to master and then whenever I get a map, okay, I'm on Towers of Doom this time. I'll open Towers of Doom. I'll just take a quick crash course and say, okay, yada, yada. This is, uh, these are really big changes. They're really small <laughs> wins. So I'd say, eh, whatever. That's kind of bad. Let's knock it back to a month. Um, and then here it kind of insights into the heroes that are performing well on this particular map. And then this obviously ties into my own personal knowledge of the game, uh, which is presumably and hopefully quite broad. And I can apply this and work it out. But it's a good it's a good just quick overview into what's going to be effective. And then I then know from my own understanding uh, how to apply this. But certainly it's, it's this is a great starting point, which, like I said, it's updated constantly and it's perfectly tailored to your skill level and to the map as well. I know people have been asking me this stuff all the time. Here you go, awesome, great place to start, great place to see matchups, to see duos, to see wins by map, and you can fit it to your particular level of play. All right, guys, well, that is the five tips for drafting. I hope you found that helpful. Um, I think it should be helpful. There's a lot of information in there that you can make use of some larger scale tips as well as then some smaller particular tips that you can implement. So yeah, give the video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, let me know what you thought about uh, it in the comments down below. And do let me know as well uh, any other sort of uh, themes for video that you would like to see in this particular series. Like I said at the start, I've got a couple of others prepared already, but there's probably a huge room for scope for other types of videos so do let me know uh if you're new to the channel as well do subscribe and check out the other stuff and uh yeah cool just welcome to the channel i hope you enjoy and i hope i will see you all again very soon for more heroes of the storm Bye bye